Hello and welcome to Malware Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today we will be looking at a Java based um, malware and but let's take a look first uh, so so you can see um, how you determine if it's a jar file or not because often you just get samples without any extension so you need to figure out what it is first. Um, if you put it in a hex editor, the first thing you will see here is that it starts with the with PK uh, magic number, which stands for fill cuts, and that's the those are the initials of the I think developer of this uh, zip archive, and well that means this is a a zip archive, and one thing we have here is a manifest. This is typical for runnable JAR files. A JAR file is nothing else than an archive that contains uh, dot .class um, files. And dot .class files are the files in a Java archive that um, contain the bytecode. So that's what we see. We, we see already um, this is a runnable JAR. There are also jar files that are not runnable um, if this manifest doesn't exist. Uh, the manifest declares the start of execution in a runnable jar file. And we can see that there is a class with this random name in it. And maybe there's more, but I don't see more right now. Yeah, that seems to be it. Okay. Now how do we analyze those? Well, there are lots of lots of decompilers out there and also bytecode viewers. I personally prefer bytecode viewer because this is a tool that combines lots of lots of... Oh, what's that? Needs to connect first. I guess it tried to connect to uh, update the bytecode viewer. Well, that's a Java exception right here. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, the so again, I like this tool because you can uh, use lots of deep compilers like JDGUI um, or Fanflow or Krakatau, and you can all use all of them side by side. Um, if one of them doesn't work or doesn't show everything, you just use another one. So. It's like the Swiss army knife for for this purpose. Now, if you just drag the sample in here, you will probably not, yeah, you don't have any decompilation. Uh, it just shows like the hex view. And that's because this tool needs you to set a .jar extension. Otherwise, it just reacts this way. and. I really hate that because if you set the extension you might accidentally run it by double clicking or by marking it and pressing enter. Um, so in this case I changed the association for .jar. You can do this here in default programs and associate a file type and then you can go to the .jar extension and change that so that for instance notepad opens instead. And this will prevent it from running the .jar if you double click it, because now Notepad will just open and show garbage. All right, but this tool is happy. Uh, you can see right here it uh, shows the Java icon, and there it is. We have this manifest. Let's take a look at it, and it. De defines the main class, so it will look into this class for the main method. That's where the entry point of execution is for Java. So let's take a look here. You see I set the fanflow decompiler. Um, I also set a bytecode decompiler, so here we have the bytecode instructions. Sometimes um, if there was an certain obfuscator use, the decompilation won't work because the instructions are so weird that they well make no sense in any decompiled way. Um, but they are more flexible 
than than what you can do here. So uh, this may happen, and then you need that. Or sometimes, yeah, the decompiler might just have problems with other stuff. Okay, but this looks good. It looks like it could decompile everything right here. Um, and here we have lots of lots of that's the main method that's where it would start execution and we have lots of strings that get decrypted with this decrypt method um, yeah so it's obfuscated it's not packed I mean it does all of the interesting stuff here like post HTTP um, get auto start great but great shortcut and so on. Uh, but we cannot read the strings, so we need to deobfuscate that. Um, for doing that, I would just. Well, no, that was the wrong. I do not want to connect to a projector here. Okay, I would just use the decompiled code and modify it a bit so we see the strings. Uh, we don't need this. Um, it imports this. Let's just take a look at it. Okay, it's just some kind of oh nothing important. It's a file folder. We can leave that out. Okay. Um, we set it to Java, and we also save it as a .java file with the same name that the class has, otherwise the compiler will complain. So save the... okay, to the desktop please. That's nice. Okay, and now, ah, now we can modify it. Um, here's the decrypt function. And usually if you have any language, decompiled language or scripting language that you're not familiar with, I recommend that you first uh, find out where is the entry point, the start of execution. Uh, secondly, how is this um, how is this language able to execute a file? And uh, third, how can you print out stuff? And that's what we will use here. System out print line is the print for Java. Um, oh no, we don't want to do this here. Would make sense. <laughs> we want to print out the return value. Let's just say return string. That's the return string. We will print that out. Return string. And return it. Alright. And maybe also state where this is coming from. This is a decrypted string. Okay. And uh, since this function uh, or method, it's a method in object oriented programming languages, um, it's called from, yeah, basically everywhere where strings are used. So we will get all of these strings at once. Um, Okay, there's another thing. It does some kind of check here. Uh, if a file exists, I doubt that it does. If it doesn't exist, I don't know what file it is now. Uh, it will not execute the whole main method. Also here are some exec functions. That's, that's uh, one way in Java to execute a file. And we should really not do this. Um, oh, then let's just replace this. Let's see. Um, with this, I think it might be a good idea to look for other executions. We have one here too. Um, let's search for exec. There's another one, and that's also used in down there. So if you just remove it, it will make problems. But 
I do not care for that part. Just remove it. Um, also, it writes some temporary files here. This is interesting. We might just want to dump those. I mean, we don't want to monitor and then search for the files, so just uh, write it on a con to a convenient location. What's this? Get HD serial windows, and that's some kind of BBS script, I guess. So let's call it this way. That uh, that means it will whatever it writes, it will write it to to the same location where the uh, where our file is, and call it this way. Okay, let's search for more execs. Here's another one. Whoa, okay, and that's not what we want. And we will also do this here, new file. Oops. <laughs> um, that's a shortcut, so we name it shortcut dump. It says great shortcut right here. <laughs> okay, exec. There's another one down there. Auto start. Hmm, this will get interesting. And that. We don't need that. New file. Auto start dump. Alright, so that way we can just tell them ever to do what we want it to do. That's nice. We don't want it to communicate. <laughs> no, I don't want to communicate. No, this is not what we want. Just don't do it. Okay, print line. And this is supposed HTTP. Oh, we will just print the arguments here. So post params. This looks okay. <laughs> it even called it in fact one probably another language, not sure. Uh, and that's probably some I don't know, Spanish or whatever. So with that you could conclude what language the author is capable of and maybe maybe it's even the mother language, uh, mother tongue. Um, okay, did we get everything? Is there... Also this... Um, this thing here, this is a check if um, all of these values are set, like if the name, if the PC is a name, and the, the, there's a serial number, and so on. Um, we don't really need that, nor do we need that. I would just say, no matter what, just go and execute the rest. Okay. Um. Let's take a look. Here's another thing. It, it will try to download something. I don't want it to download anything. I don't have an internet connection anyways. Um, okay. Uh, this is this down function. Okay. Protocol door. Protocol door. Indrego Ak that is whatever <laughs> and destino okay Good. I think this looks okay now we could try and see what it does. I even though I removed um, the downloading and uh, the execution, I do not recommend that you uh, execute any of this code on a machine that's not secured or that's not meant for running malware. You might overlook something, so be careful. Okay, 
we will try it um, by just compiling it and running it. Uh, you need to install the JDK, the Java Development Kit, okay? Um, I will link it below and you might also have to set the environmental variables to make it work. So yeah, let's compile it. What was it again? Oh, I always have to look this up. That's, uh, I think... Mm. Um, is it? I'm not so sure of this. No. That was for running it, I guess. Could not find a Java. Ah, no. <laughs> okay. Sorry for that one. Uh, you can also use an IDE, of course. Um, but that's just the uh, most plain way. Okay, it complains because we have we don't have this class one. Um, let's search for it. One. There it is. Oh, we don't need that anyways. Return now. Okay. Do that again. Now, uh, the Java compiler compiled now our um, class. Well, this is now, now this is the Java co code and that's the compiled bytecode um, that we can now use to run. And I think it was that. Okay. Well, this looks okay. Couldn't find a vow. And that made an exception in 368. But we already got some de uh, decrypted strings right here. So what's that? Three, six, eight. No. Three, six, eight. That's here. It's it's trying to decompress something. So let's look into this function. Right. Uh, go up. There it is. Okay. We don't need that. No. Um just print it out what it does and so it doesn't okay well let's add the decompress camino camino file and camino new file okay that's better now we compile it and run it again well that. That's better. It worked. Okay. We print it into a lock and then we can open it. Oh, let's just open it with our input. Yeah. Okay, here we have our dumps. This is cool. All of our dumps. And that's our lock file. Um and all of the decrypted strings in here we can already see a lot uh, like locations it connects to and locations it, it downloads files to and um, this is cool so here here are some strings that are probably written to those stems and yeah and in the end it will shut down our system Nice, nice. Um, and these are also worth looking at. That's the auto start dump. Um, okay. And here are the other two. 
and yeah, see, so these are just some, uh, I guess, VB script files, helper files that it uses. Um, this creates a um, shortcut. Yeah, in auto start. Okay, and yeah. Well, that's it. I guess we we did it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, p please post them below. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.